Yes, everyone, I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Line CV, and welcome to another news daily video. Now, in today's video, I will be talking about Petr Cech's return back to the club. I'll be talking about Sari's first press conference at Juventus. I'll be talking about Rudiger's injury update and I'm going to be talking about reports suggesting that Jorginho could be reuniting with Sari at Juventus. But before I get into anything, today's video was brought to you by the OneFootball app. There's never been a better time to download the OneFootball app. It's the summer transfer window. There's fresh news coming every single hour and the OneFootball app is the best app to have as it acts as a hub to get access to all these different articles. So if you guys want to know what's happening in the market today, download the One Football app. Getting straight into things, starting with the first report for today, and that's in regards to Petr Cech. And yes, it looks like the club will finally announce that, yeah, Petr is going to be coming back and he will be taking over as the new director of football. And this is something which we've known about for a very, very long time now. It's always been a formality in this sense. We've been waiting for them to finalize the move and fully announce it. It's finally happening. And these leaked photos come courtesy from someone who happened to do the stadium tour at the same time as Marina and Petter, who were obviously doing all the press stuff for that announcement tomorrow morning. I expect more in-depth reports in regards to what this announcement means for the future of this club is very good and expect to hear my thoughts tomorrow when this deal becomes officially announced. Moving straight into the second report for today, we need to talk about Sari's first press conference at Juventus and for me, it does feel really surreal. It feels like it was yesterday when I was covering his first press conference with us. Now he's at Juventus. For me, I still can't get over how quickly the season's gone by, but getting straight back into the press conference. Now, for the sake of time, I'm going to be paraphrasing the press conference because it was an hour long. It would take too much time to break it down. And I'm going to focus on the key points that were spoken about. He was asked about whether he was a rigged manager. And Sari responded by stating that, well, I've been at many different clubs and with every different club I've been at, I've adapted to the strengths of the players and I've used many different tactical solutions. And that's one thing that I'm definitely going to agree with when it comes to Sari. I feel like some of his tactical decisions last season were so nuanced that most people just didn't really understand what was happening. But Sari said something that was quite interesting in this press conference. And he mentioned the fact that when he was with us last season, he used a 4-4-2 in disguise. Now, I can kind of see this. If you guys remember my videos, I would always mention the fact that when we first started pressing, the team would turn into a 4-4-2. Now, that's as far as my understanding goes when it comes to what Sari said, but it has made me realize maybe I need to go back and look at some previous games. Maybe there were some things that I missed out on, but when you do think about it, Eden Hazard was constantly trying to operate close to the striker, either that being Iguain or Giroud. So in that sense, we do turn into a 4-4-2. So yeah, I kind of see that. For the millionth time, Sari was asked about Sari Ball, Sarizimo. And by now, I'm sure that Sari is quite fed up asking the same question. Again, he said that he doesn't understand why he's been given that moniker. Not once has he suggested that he is reinventing the wheel. Now, later on in the press conference, Sari kind of had a few digs towards the English media. And in it, he was stating that he was quite disappointed by the Italian press for constantly quoting all these English tabloid papers. And Sari was basically saying, listen, there's levels between the Times and the Telegraph and the Sun and the Daily Mirror. And to end that point, Sari mentioned that all the personal attacks only made him stronger. They asked him about Higuain and Sari mentioned that they haven't spoken since the final of the Europa League. Makes a lot of sense. Sari said that he has been dealing with Juventus, so I completely understand that. And in it, Sari was kind of hinting towards the fact that if Higuain wants to stay, it's going to be up to him. I'm guessing that confirms that Higuain won't be coming back with us. I think we already knew that already. And um, yeah, for me personally, I did see some exciting bits of play and some good quality from the players. So I wouldn't think it's fair to call him a unanimous failure. But if you are Iguain and you're listening to Sari's press conference, you're putting down that burger. You're pouring the milkshake in the sink 
You're getting straight into the gym. You're doing your push-ups. You're doing your running. As I'm saying, good luck to him. And to end the press conference, Sari was asked how he's going to help improve Juventus. And I thought that this part of the conference was the most interesting part, in my personal opinion. I think throughout last season, way too many people, too many, kept constantly throwing this label that Sari is very rigged tactically, very predictable, which wasn't correct in my opinion. I saw so many nuances which I will be discussing in a Sari review which will come out next week. And I don't mean to sound arrogant, but I personally feel that a lot of people just didn't understand many of the tactical nuances. People haven't understood the tactical side to our game over the past few years. And with what Sari says next, I feel like it does kind of summarize everything that I've been feeling. Sari spoke about his philosophy, stating that, yes, he understands that he will be coming to a new team. And to get this team playing towards his idea of football, they're going to have to strike that balance. He knows that he just can't make these abrupt changes instantly. It's going to take time. Now, to get to the point I was referencing, Sari said that he likes his team to have more freedom in the final third. He likes his players to be able to improvise when it comes to playing in the final third. And the reason why I'm bringing this point up is that so often, everyone tries to paint the picture that Sari was predictable and rigged, and he gets the guys making the same patterns of play every single time. And, and I feel the reason why so many people were quite pessimistic towards Sari, so many people were saying that he was rigged, was due to the limits of the players. I'm sorry, I mean, come on. We've seen guys like William, Pedro, and even Hazard in that degree doing the same moves every single time. The system never made these guys play predictably. And the cynical part of you could think, well, if these guys just didn't have any improvisation at all, could they have been more effective? You know, the same moves they've been doing for the past few seasons. Yeah, Hazard is good enough where he can continue to do whatever he wants. But when it came to Pedro and William, and William in particular, it felt as if the entire league had just clocked onto how the guy plays and he just wasn't effective at anything he was doing. And maybe if a lot of these players played more towards the system, instead of playing for themselves, maybe they could have adapted to what Sari was trying to bring here and maybe Sari might have still remained at this club. Now moving on to the third story for today, that's in regards to Jorginho and whether he might be going back to Juventus. It's been rumoured for a while that it's looking like there could be potential interest from Juventus when it comes to signing Jorginho. Now, Jorginho's agent, Joao Santos, he's been releasing some very conflicting reports over the past few weeks. Originally, he was very confident when he said that Jorginho will be staying here 110%. He isn't planning on leaving, regardless of whether Sarri stays or leaves. But since then, it moved from the guy staying 110% to being unsure about Juventus' interest and stating that even though Jorginho does have Napoli ties, he is a professional and obviously he's not going to stop any opportunities that's going to further his career. Now that Sarri has officially signed for Juventus, Joao Santos came out to state Jorginho's only signed a four-year deal. We're going to wait a few days to see if there's anything concrete from all the rumours. Jorginho does like his time here right now, but anything can happen in the market. We'll have to wait and see. Earlier today, the Evening Standard came out to state that the club have said that they aren't planning on selling Jorginho at all, there's no interest, and they have plans of using him for next season. Now, I'll give my thoughts and opinions on this story, and I feel as if that, to really do it justice, let's be objective, let's leave emotion to the side, and let's just purely analyse the situation. Don't worry, I will be doing a video purely dedicated towards Jorginho, and I think something that's very fair to talk about is the fact that could Jorginho possibly survive without playing in Sarri's system? Now, that's not me stating that Jorginho just can't play football at all. Far from it. I think the guy is one of the best in his positions, but his overall game is very good. But what I'm talking about is, and for you guys that have been watching my videos for a while, you'll all understand and know that I've been a massive advocate for teams to really use players in their best positions, in their best roles, 
to get the maximum out from the player. And so often you see players that get mismanaged and they can't fully show what they're about. And I'm applying this to Jorginho. If Jorginho isn't playing in a possession heavy team, are we gonna see his 10 out of 10 best? And that's what I care about. When you're a club at this level where you have aspirations to be one of the best teams in the world, you want all these guys playing in a system that's gonna get their 10 out of 10 out from the players. Jorginho does have a lot of merits to his game and he would be able to play in midfield. But my thing's gonna be, can he consistently play to his best abilities? And that's gonna be something to think about. Now, one thing that I kept taking away from Joao Santos' quotes was the fact that he kept trying to separate being a professional from being a fan. And in that sense, it gives you a slight indication in regards to how they view Jorginho's career. And they might be thinking the same thing I'm thinking, listen, if there is interest from Juventus, you'll be playing in a system which you know will get the best out of you. You'll have a world-class supporting cast. You'll have guys like Ronaldo. You'll have guys like Pjanic. So many top players to work with. And when you consider all these possibilities, I won't hold it against the club or the player if they decide, you know what, maybe I wanna go to Juventus and see what Sarri Ball does in Turin. I'm gonna keep stressing this. I wanna see 100% chemistry with the players being comfortable in the system they're playing in. I've been sick and tired of seeing us misusing players out of position, not really fulfilling their potential because of, you know, these sacrificial tactics. It's what's really stopped us from progressing and going to that next level. And just to end my points, if Jorginho does leave, maybe this could be what guys like Baka, Mason Mount, or maybe even future transfer targets like Endombele from Lyon. And it gets you thinking, if you did have a Jorginho in the team and you have a squad that has Ruben, Kante, and you want to sign Endombele, can you afford to have Jorginho in that midfield? Especially if it means that you won't be using possession heavy tactics. I'm not saying I have the answers. It's something I'm still pondering. And I'm going to leave this question to you guys. In the comment section below, give me your thoughts and opinions as to why you'd like to see Jorginho stay or why you think it makes sense to let him leave. And to end things with a final report for today's video, that's an injury update in regards to Rudiger. This was reported by The Telegraph, and they're stating that Rudiger won't be available for the start of next season. And that's due to the fact that Rudiger doesn't want to rush back, he wants to take his time, and he regrets doing that last time. And he regrets making that mistake before when he rushed himself back to be fit for that game against Man United. For me, I think it's a very wise decision to make now that you have pre-season. It means that you can get optimum fitness. It makes a lot of sense. And this segues in nicely to my thoughts and opinions. With Rudiger, I think he's a decent player. When you analyze the squad, we only have Louise and Christensen. Gary Cahill won't be here for next season. Rudiger won't be back, I'm guessing, until maybe September. And when it comes to Ethan Ampadu, it's looking very likely that he will be leaving on loan. So my question is, how many defenders do we need to bring back from the loan army? Now, one player who was guaranteed, and I say was, even though I've been stating that Zuma will be returning, that was when Sari was here. Sari wanted to bring back Zuma, I'm guessing that things wouldn't have been affected regardless. I mean, we have a transfer ban, we need to bring players back, Rudy is out, and Zuma had a fantastic season at Everton, so it would make sense that his position isn't going to be different, he's still going to be part of the plans for next season. So that means we have Zuma, Luis, and Christensen, with Rudiger possibly arriving a month after the season starts. Some of you might be thinking, Nini, this makes sense to bring back to Mori. He had a fantastic season on loan at Derby. He was their player of the year. And Lampard's coming back as well. Hey, things make even more sense. However, however, I do want to highlight the realities. I love saying that all of a sudden. I don't know why. But those realities are, how many defenders are you going to really use through the course of a season? Look at last season. Yeah, some of the defenders did suffer a few injuries. But it never got to that extent where we needed to get reinforcement. I mean, think about it. Gary Cahill wasn't needed at any time this season. Even the times where we struggled, even the times where players weren't fully fit, he still wasn't needed. And I don't want Tomori to be in the same boat. 
Tomori's had a fantastic season and for me it's about continuing that it's about progressing he needs consistent first team football he doesn't need to be the fourth or fifth choice option at this club that's really not going to help his career and for me I think that four defenders for next season is best and I think all we need to do is bring back Kurzuma. and with Rudy out this is going to be a fantastic opportunity for Zuma and Christensen to hopefully get that game time together and become that first choice pairing that I know a lot of us fans have always wanted to see. But anyway, you guys, I'm going to keep things moving. Thank you for watching. I do want to apologize. I was supposed to be releasing the Frank Lampard video today, but you guys know that I like to do things properly. I could very easily just speak from the top of my head make stuff up, not be as concise or as detailed as I like to be, but that's not going to do justice for you or for myself. I'm not really about that life, so apologies for that. Expect that video to come this weekend. I feel like I should be good for that. You guys, thank you for watching. I'm Nimi FC. This is Behind CV. See you guys tomorrow.